Openers are strangely a contentious point in the Final Fantasy community. Your typical reaction is usually, openers don't matter outside of Savage. Sometimes people get nasty about it even, as if a short countdown before a trial or a raid fight is going to ruin their day. And the title of this video has obviously told you what I think about this viewpoint being a bit daft and outright toxic. But what is an opener? For you newer or uninformed players, an opener is what it sounds like, how you open a fight. The order of skills you use for the highest damage output is typically also true of an opener. It sets the pace for your rotation for an entire fight. In my 1 to 80 guides, I go over multiple openers at different levels. They're not always optimal, but they're at least something to get you on your way of doing your rotation correctly. And here's just a few examples of level 80 openers. Dragoon, Machinist, yes I did mispronounce that on purpose, and Gunbreaker. Every job, even the healers, just look at the mess that is Astrologian, has an opener. Some jobs have a handful of openers even, for different types of fights, even though normal players can typically stick to just one opener with little issue. Openers do matter in most content. They can even matter in dungeons in very rare cases, but Trials and Rage especially means a proper opener can be the difference between life and death. In more than one scenario, the tank randomly pulling without warning made the difference between a wipe and a clear. 1% wipes aren't just a thing you see in high-end raiding. They happen when things go wrong. People see the boss is about to die or get lazy or careless. They die, the dominoes begin to fall, and nobody is left in the end. 1% can be a huge amount of HP, especially in alliance raids, but if a single decision could have given an extra 1% DPS, this would have been a clear. Just barely though. I often see the argument that 1% more DPS is not that much time saved, that people wanting openers in casual content need to be more patient while ignoring the reverse of the situation. Asking for an opener is the actual patient argument. In a 4 minute fight, a 1% increase in clear time would be 2.4 seconds. An 8 minute fight, 4.8 seconds. Your average opener timer is 20 seconds. To save more time than the countdown timer costs, you would need more than a 4% DPS increase over an entire 8 minute fight. People asking for an opener aren't just asking for a faster run or anything like that. They're asking for a slower run. Slow and steady wins the race, and proper openers are slow and steady, even if the act of performing an opener is anything but. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to why openers always matter. So today, let's argue the points. There are two major points I want to go over, and then return to this slow and sturdy point to wrap up with. By the end, I hope I have convinced people who think openers don't matter that they actually do. This isn't just some elitist posturing, but an actual helpful tool that can benefit most players. Not only can it help the actual elite players continue to be elite, even outside the usual hunting grounds, it will bring up the average player's output and personal ability too. Let's start with the elite players though, since this is the easier point to prove. And while I'm not exactly the most of elite, I'm going to use myself, and I'm going to use the current raid tier as examples. I know this is a visual platform, what being a video and all, but if you want to avoid spoilers, click over to another tab and just listen to my annoying voice fell on for far too long about how little differences have huge consequences. I will be very generic in my descriptions of mechanics just to keep from spoilers. 
I'll be sure to give you a vocal warning when I've gotten away from the spoiler fights and gotten to safer to look at content. For now, I'm going to be talking about Eden's Promise Savage. Okay, let's get into it. There's no real moments in E9 or 10S that really come to mind where even small differences can ruin my run, but when we get to E11S, a fraction of a second can cost me an entire GCD, or even leave me with damage down if I don't realize I am behind in my rotation. A damage down that is very heavy given it is Savage. Here he does an attack where he faces a random direction, then does a line AoE that then explodes. He will do this a second time shortly before the end of the first phase of the fight. One of these will be fire based and the other is lightning based. The lightning one explodes into a much, much larger line AoE that forces you to near the edge of the arena. But I can get in a GCD at the absolute last second and still avoid the second AoE with no issue. Provided the boss was pulled at zero seconds and I got my opener timed right. Half a second late to start my rotation, or half a second lost during the fight before this lightning AoE, and I will lose a single GCD. No big loss, but I might not realize I am behind as I am due to how tight the timing is. Without timing my GCD on an absolute perfect run, I can't see how tight the window I have is, or if I am within that window. Let's move on to E12S now. The first major mechanic is this ice one. I know when I am outside the safe window for this one though. If my Nestrand does not go out immediately after the ground becomes ice, this moment here, I am behind. Earlier is even better because I know I am super safe. Once again, if I am outside of the safe window, I lose an entire GCD, but this one is different. It's not just one GCD, because this mechanic is also a burst phase for me. Dragon Sight, all of my jumps, the third Nestrand, Gaskogel, and Mirage Dive will all go out in the 20 seconds or so this mechanic lasts. If I am behind half a GCD, maybe even a quarter, it goes from a normal rotation to being behind the rest of the fight. Every future action being mistimed in what is already a very tightly timed encounter. And this is the only choice I have because if I am outside the window and I still go for the GCD, I will die. All of this from getting my opener timing right. Now, the obvious counter is just don't go for the hit, just like in E12S. This misses the fact that this is Savage. DPS checks in Savage aren't exactly lenient, especially in the second half of the tier. Every GCD matters in the first week or two, and playing things safe means you miss out on a dozen GCDs over a fight, not just that one. You have to go for these extra hits. This becomes second nature to a point. Greed isn't just greed for greed's sake it becomes a normal part of play and also feels wrong when you're not doing it. But my point is, in this context, it's not about parsing, it's about getting the clear, period. Then after you've finally gotten the clear, when you come back to the fight, you've done it once, why not do it again? There's no reason not to. This leads back into the elite players being in your runs. They're going to be going for these tiny extra hits and performing on a level beyond everyone else. Plus, these situations are much less tight. In E12S, the difference between a good and bad run is a quarter to half a GCD for me. In casual content, it's probably more like three quarters to nine tenths of leeway. No way to get one more GCD, but also a billion amounts of safety room. Plus, people are often very loud about the low quality of players they get over in forums and such. Even when they themselves aren't anything amazing. So much peacocking around, 
but the moment they actually get a party member a level beyond any expectations who knows what they're doing, it's no longer a big deal? Is it really that hard that you allow these skilled players to use their skill? And yes, these are often the same people. A Venn diagram of these groups is almost an entire circle. You can't pretend caring doesn't happen either. I'm sure many of you use parsers and even see when someone is outright underperforming, if performing at all. Or players performing at a level far beyond what you think is average. There is plenty of caring that does happen, and a countdown timer for an opener will help them do it. Especially when we consider that when I do delay my rotation in E12S, it ruins the rest of the fight for me. I don't just lose one GCD, I lose a bunch. This happens in the normal fights too, and I'm a Dragoon. I basically don't need a countdown for a good opener, long as I pay attention to when the tank is pulling. Also, you can tab back over now, I'm done with the spoilerific places. Jobs like Ninja become a nightmare mess if your opener is thrown off. Jump animation locks are nothing compared to the requirement of standing still for Tenchi Jin, or mages in general needing to stand still to cast. Black Mage has limited movement skills, and part of a skilled Black Mage's opener is placing themselves in a spot to dodge AoEs before the fight even begins. Some jobs you might be massively hampering for an entire fight. What is one GCD for me on Dragoon can become large swaths of damage for other jobs. Just don't go for the GCD becomes far more, and more likely to end up killing people, including these better players. They're trying to be a team player by trying to do their best even in this super unimportant content that doesn't need an opener. You could try being a team player by not making them suffer for an entire fight with a rotation that isn't working due to everything being off. But that's for the elite players. If all that doesn't convince you, maybe the fact that openers are more important for bad and average players than good players will. Yes, that's right, openers are actually beneficial for those people you probably complain aren't all too great. Not only is the anti-opener stance annoying, it's actively harming any chance to learn how to properly use their opener, or even play the job in general, in actual content. I have a theory that most of the bad players who aren't bad on purpose, that are actually open to advice, are only bad because the player base doesn't let them improve. That's right, it's not their fault they're bad, it's your fault for not letting them have an opener and being consistent with having countdown timers. After a while, someone might ask the question of why people are starting fights with these long 20 second timers. This will lead them into openers and trying to teach themselves, into guides for good openers, into more learning. I myself am 90% self-taught, 10% someone who has used guides. Many, many players want to learn how to play their job for themselves. To go for a guide, you will need to give them a real reason to want to. The realization that there's these complex, super mathed out openers people use for big damage is a very tantalizing carrot on a stick. Even without full on guides, people might give little tips here and there. Ideas that are paramount to openers like precasting, or general rules their job follows, small nudges that allows them bigger leaps in playstyle. Fighting a dummy only does so much, you need to put your opener and rotation against a real fight with mechanics to actually hit a real breakthrough. And it doesn't stop there. The examples I gave with losing or gaining a specific GCD at specific sections of a fight works both ways. A specific mechanic means I should be at a specific GCD, and a specific GCD means a specific mechanic is happening. I use this idea a lot in E10S, just for reference, but it's how I play a lot of fights in the game. I can't remember them all, and I expect an average player to remember entire fights by heart even less because mere photographic memory of video game encounters is kinda lame, but the ones I do remember 
I use to my advantage. Pre-placing myself for whatever is to come, checking if I need sprint for a mechanic and if I have it, etc. Most people don't go through these motions not because of them being lazy or incapable or even caring, though there are definitely people in those groups, but because they're never given the chance to. They're forced to fly by the seat of their pants because the tank is pulling instantly. Or they are the tank who is instantly pulling because they don't realize just how much their fellow players would benefit from a chance to get an opener out. Again, it's not just the opener that makes such a big difference, it's how the opener sets the pace for an entire fight. An opener follows into a rotation, and letting people practice a rotation and a fight with proper pacing that's consistent between runs will allow them to improve. And whether you realize it or not, this is a huge DPS increase for the entire player base. Earlier I made comments about a 4% DP increase over an 8 minute fight, or how about an 8 or 9% increase over a 4 minute fight. These numbers aren't actually as ridiculous as you might think. For one, I haven't been focusing on the opener itself in the video, just the overall effect it has on fights and players. But the damage increases a proper opener can have for the entire team is actually extremely significant. Buffs are multiplicative, so everyone doing their openers properly, or even improperly, and at just throwing stuff out randomly, at once will massively boost the damage that gets put out, and this will happen multiple times in a fight with using stuff on cooldown. Reopeners, as they are called, is doing your opener in the middle of a fight, usually with the condition that the boss has just returned after being untargetable, but not exclusively. These are places where party DPS spikes yet again to very high levels, and even the worst players are still being buffed in these windows unless they just stop attacking for the entire duration. It is buffing everyone, increasing everyone's damage, and making the fight that much safer. Then again, there's the whole of rotations. Everyone being on the same page and everyone being able to follow their rotation consistently further ups party DPS. Again, I can only say it so many times, whether you want to admit it or not, letting players attempt to be consistent will make them consistent. If nothing else, consistent play will lower the death count. The less a player is dying, the more damage they're doing. They're more consistent in more ways than just damage. This puts less strain on the healers, leaving them to do even more damage too, or not dying themselves because they're too focused trying to recover from everyone else dying. And all of this on top of fights ending earlier, skipping mechanics that might otherwise cause a wipe. Some mechanics I always see one or two people die to, be it their fault or someone else's. Skipping a set of these at the 8 minute mark due to higher DPS means you don't potentially wipe to said mechanic and see the boss reset after hitting 1%. It's not all about damage and parsing, it's everything. Damage, learning, consistency, and safety. It's 20 seconds before a fight. It's nothing. The potential time you save is far more. And personally, it's just far more fun. Openers are important in Trials, in Raids, in Alliance Raids, and especially Savage and above. You don't have to be doing lengthy countdowns at every single boss of a dungeon, but the final boss of a dungeon it's nice to have an opener for it too. Bardem's Metal would be one I point to especially. That last boss is rough. For good and bad players alike, teach and do good habits. It's not all about speed or parsing or elitism. There's so much more to an opener than just damage. It's fun and safe and it's a teachable tactic. But the damage is really good too. Thank you for watching this little rant on openers. 
I truly do believe what I said in the middle of the video. Resources and the chance to use the resources are both required for people to learn properly. People are often surprised when fast runs happen. We should be trying to make that less a surprise, not being angry that people who want to use one of their key tools are part of the cause of fast runs. Be better and help others be better. And may the power of Anna Nedhogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Ethan, Ethan Olson, Jamie Cotterell, Kathy Nock, Malfi, and Valor LLC. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching.